Hi, it's Coach John. Well, everybody likes to hit the long ball, and believe us, us coaches like that too. But I can tell you a tool that's under-practiced and almost as valuable, and that's bunting. All right, it doesn't matter where you are in the lineup. If we need you to move a runner, or if the defense is back and you have any amount of speed, doesn't have to be blazing fast, but if you're an athlete, and I know most of you are, then it's a fantastic tool. This isn't baseball, folks. 60 foot bases means a perfectly fielded bunt has to happen to get out most runners. Any bobble at all, and we're on base. And on base means we've got a chance to score runs. So we're gonna walk through a few steps, show you a couple of different concepts in bunting, and help you get strong on your short game. All right, athletes, today we're lucky enough to have Lily from Freedom Fast Pitch with us to uh, demonstrate a couple of different bunting techniques and how we can accomplish some of the things that will help our short game out. Okay. So nothing changes in the batter's box when we're getting ready to bunt. And what we're talking about specifically with bunting here is a sacrifice bunt. And what I mean by that is we're sacrificing ourselves as an out in order to move a runner on base, okay? So Lily's gonna be in a normal batting stance and the pitcher has just started her wind up and Lily is then going to square to bunt is what we call this. Now, a couple of things she's done here. Lily started to turn her hips and take this front knee and push it right at the pitcher, okay? This is important, you can't bunt from a sideways position. The other thing Lily's done is dropped and separated her hands to give her stability on both parts of the bat. Now what we like is to have the bat right up at the top part of the eyes. And I'll tell you why. Lily's looking now right over the level of the bat, and this is going to define the top of her strike zone. So it's really simple. If a pitch comes in and Lily sees that the ball is at the bat level or higher, what are you gonna do, Lily? gonna draw the bat back and let it be a ball, okay? Now understand the reason we start off from the top end is because we always wanna start bunting from the uh, top end, working our way down. The worst thing a coach hates to see is calling a bunt and that bunt pops up in the air because we got underneath it. We start at the top and we work our way down. So go ahead in your position, Lily. Lily squared to bunt, pitch comes in, and Lily adjusts by bending her knees and the bat down to a ball as she's bunting it. Pretend like you got a ball coming in. Good. Now, it's important to recognize that what Lily's not doing when the ball's coming in is she's not poking at the ball. She's not punching at the ball. She's not moving the bat. All she's doing is taking the energy of the pitch, letting it impact the bat, and go fair. So go ahead and stand up. It's important to understand that when Lily presents the bat though, in order for the ball to go fair, we don't want to have the bat over the plate. What we'd like to do, go ahead Lily, is we'd like to have that bat presented in fair territory. That way, even if we catch it on the very bottom of the bat and the ball drops straight down, we're still in fair territory. The catcher has to get up out of her crouch and try to make the throw. Usually you only get one good shot before the infield's aware of what you're trying to do. So, this is all about decision making. If a ball's coming over the bat, you know it's a ball, you pull back. You've already defined one of your strike zones. That's an easy decision. Lily's defined with her arm the inside part of the strike zone. So if there's anything coming inside of Lily's arm, she pulls back and that's a ball. So this is a great tool. With these defined parts of the strike zone, all Lily has to do is track the ball out and down and make a decision whether the ball is too far down or too far out. So that's two decisions instead of four decisions in making a great play in order to move the ball forward. Well, as they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? So um, there's another type of bunting that we teach and uh, it's very useful, it's very athletic, and it's very effective. It's called slip bunting, and I'll tell you some of the advantages. So when Lily's in her bunting stance and the pitcher starts to wind up, Lily's gonna loosen her hands and let the bat drop down to the natural point 
in which it stops where the barrel starts to lengthen, okay? Now she's gonna keep those hands together and that's gonna allow her to pivot into her bunting position. Now everything else here stays the same. The bat starts at eye level to define the top of the strike zone. The bat is in front of the plate so that the ball stays fair. The elbow defines the inner part of the strike zone. Some of the advantages to this is many coaches teach batters, or fielders I should say, to watch the hands separate in order to cover the bunt. Well, Lily's hands never separate. The other thing is, Lily has a single signal control over the pivot of her bat. If she separates her hands, go ahead and separates her hands, she has to tell her mind two different uh, messages. She has to tell the bat to move this way with this hand, pull back, or vice versa. If she has the hands together, she can send one message on directional and back control. This is great for a top of the lineup hitter, somebody maybe a two hitter, that you wanna control the movement of the ball, directionally bunt, and do a few things that are a little bit more advanced in order to move runners ahead, okay? Now, having said that, you're gonna to wanna to keep a little stiffer control of the bat out here because you don't have that leverage point. All right, it's a great technique. It's just a little different from what you're used to. Okay, parents, so now you've got some basic bunting skills that we've showed you. Now you have to practice that. And why do we front toss our bunters? It's not just to get good at bunting, it's to get good at hitting. A lot of times we don't take into consideration that tracking the ball to the bat makes us better hitters. It's not just about moving that base runner up, it's about seeing that ball touch the bat, warming up our eyes right before a game, hint, hint, okay, and warming up our brain so that we can properly time bat on ball. So let's toss a few to Lily. She'll show us how to stun. So if you want to challenge your player, you can also tell them the different baseline you'd like them to go to. That gives them a different flex point in the bunting skill, and it also gives them something to shoot for so they can figure out if they're doing it right. First base. Third base. First. Third. Another way we can work on tracking is have the player do a walkthrough bunt. Now this isn't a skill that you're going to use actually in a game for a right-handed batter. It may very well work for a left-handed batter, but what it does is it allows a batter that's moving towards the ball and the ball coming towards them to track a moment of impact. That increases their tracking ability and their ability to make contact with the ball. Lily's ever so slightly squaring up and moving as she's hitting the ball. There's no game benefit from the right side, but it makes her focus extra hard on seeing the ball to the back. Lastly, we're going to put it all together and show you what it looks like for Lily to bunt a ball, drop a bat, and take off running. This is going to be what we're looking at for a surprise bunt, okay? Now this is something where the infield is back, they're behind the bag maybe, and a coach sees an opportunity with an athletic player to lay down a bunt and maybe be safe at first. So Lily's gonna do a couple where she just drops the bunt down at the last second, and then on the last one, she'll take off running. All right, Lily, let's put some wheels on. All right, so that's bunting in a nutshell. It's not just for moving runners or scoring runs, it's for being an overall better hitter. Thanks, Lily, for joining us. And hey, get your bunt on. I hope you enjoyed this latest video from K2 Mentoring. If you did, please make sure you hit the like button and of course, share it with your friends and teammates. Now, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on our next great video. And again, 
thanks for training with us. Enjoy and keep working hard.